Hello friends, this video on reproduction in plants part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now is the time to discuss about sexual reproduction in plants because it is not only uh, asexual mode by which plants can reproduce, they can also reproduce sexually. So we will see in this section how plants can reproduce sexually where two parents would be involved. Now. Why do we need to talk about sexual reproduction? Because in asexual reproduction, we saw that the new plants which were formed, they were exactly identical to the parent. So that's how it was. So there was no new traits which were seen in the new plant. But when we talk about sexual reproduction, you will see that since there are two plants which are involved in this case, so the new plants which are formed, they are not really exactly genetically identical to their parents. So we will see how exactly this entire process take place. Now, when we talk about sexual reproduction, there is a certain part of the plant which acts as the main reproductive structure and the reproductive organ of a plant is a flower. So, flower is the main reproductive organ. So, if, if there are no flowers in the plant, then what would happen? Who would carry out the process of reproduction? Yes, now there are many plants which do not have flowers. So, either they have some alternative organs which can undergo this process of reproduction otherwise the plants will not be able to reproduce so in this case we will see i mean what first of all we have to understand the structure of the flower so only then we will be able to understand this entire process of sexual reproduction because in sexual reproduction we need a male and a female so we need a male sex cell and a female sex cell and then these two cells will fuse together to form a new plant so who will produce this male sex cell and the female sex cell? So before going into all those details, let us talk about the structure of the flower. Now a flower in any plant is said to be unisexual if either male or female reproductive part is present in it. Now the male and female reproductive parts, they are not identical, they are different. And that is why the male reproductive part will produce the male sex cell, female reproductive part will produce the female sex cell. And these two cells will then fuse together to form the new plant. So there are certain flowers which either contain the male reproductive part or the female reproductive part. So if it contains the male reproductive part, it is a male flower. If it contains the female reproductive part, it is a female flower. But it in no way it will contain both the reproductive parts. So such flowers are called unisexual. Uni means one. The term uni means one and sexual is like sex. So these kind of flowers contain only one sex, either male or female. So examples of such plants are papaya, watermelon. So in these kind of plants, you will see either they contain the male part or the female part. So here you look at this example of watermelon. So here you can see this is the male part, this is the female part. So some plants might contain the male part, some plants might contain the female part. But one plant will contain either male or female. So you see the male and the female part look so different. So a flower which is the male flower and a flower which is a female flower, they look quite different from each other. You take example of human beings. In human beings also the males, the men, they contain the male reproductive part. The females or the women, they contain the female reproductive part. And these two reproductive parts are very different from each other, both in structure as well as in function. So the same is true for plants as well. Whereas there could be some types of flowers which are bisexual. Bi means two. So these flowers will have two sexes that is both male and female reproductive parts are present in it. So that means the male and the female part both are present here. So that means the, uh, the process of sexual reproduction can happen within the same flower because the, plant, the flower itself has the male part and the female part. So the male sex cells and the female sex cells both can be produced within the same flower. So examples of such flowers are china rose, mustard. Third, so these are all examples of sexual reproduction. These are examples of bisexual flowers. 
So please remember this because these are important. So the, these are the basics from where we start talking about sexual reproduction. First, you should know from where the male and the female sex cells are being produced. Another important thing, I have been talking about sex cells since quite some time. The, see, these sex cells are also called gametes and these are specialized cells which help in the process of reproduction. So our body contains so many cells. In, in fact, all multicellular organisms, they contain multiple cells. But out of these cells, there are some specialized sex cells which are called gametes and these gametes help in the process of sexual reproduction. So during sexual reproduction, the male gamete and the female gamete will fuse together to form the new organism. And the male gamete will be produced by the male, male uh, organism and the female gamete will be produced by the female organism. So in this case, the bisexual flowers can produce both male and female gametes. The unisexual flower can produce either male or female gamete. So if we compare the asexual and the sexual reproduction in plants, because asexual reproduction we have already discussed. So if you try to compare these two types of reproduction in plants, you would see that asexual reproduction was easier and faster. Not much complication was involved because, you know, it, it's like some parts of the plants, they just give rise to new plants. Seedless plants can also be grown because seeds really do not play a role in asexual reproduction you do not need a reproductive part now what is seed now seed is actually a structure which is formed from the flower we will see how exactly seed is formed so it is just a part of the flower which later becomes seed so in case of asexual reproduction flower do not play a role now since flowers do not play a role so seeds also do not have major role so even plants which do not have seeds they can also be grown desired traits can be preserved through generations like as I was telling you by artificial vegetative propagation like cutting, grafting or layering. So with all these methods, some of the traits or some of the characteristics which are desired by us, they can be preserved. So you can plant more trees with those kind of traits and that's how they can be preserved over generations. New plants formed are genetically identical to parents. This is one thing. Now, since it is just one plant which gives rise to new plant, so obviously the new plants are going to be exactly identical to the previous plant. More prone to diseases. Now, here we do not have much to handle as far as diseases are, are concerned. Now, what happens is when... So, in these plants, the way they are being produced either from their roots or stems or from their leaves, there is not much inbuilt protection against diseases. So, that is why they are more prone to diseases. There are no genetic variations because here, as I said, they are exact identical. Now, since they are exact identical, so obviously there are no variations, no new uh, features are seen in the new plants. Whereas, when you talk about sexual reproduction, it is obviously a slower mode because in asexual reproduction, a lot of uh, plants are formed. So the process is quite faster, but sexual reproduction is quite slower mode of reproduction. But here, new traits are seen. seen. So genetic variation are seen. That means new traits or new characters are seen. So characters which were not present in either of the parents are also seen in some of the new plants. It is less prone to diseases because the mechanism by which the process of sexual reproduction happens that has some inbuilt protection against diseases. So that's how they are less prone to diseases. So these are some of the positives and negatives of both sexual and asexual reproduction. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.